It's time for a little boot battle, uh, boot showdown, comparison between two of the most iconic heritage boots that you can buy that's at least in the semi-affordable range. For a lot of people, this is the upper end of stylish boots, but obviously it goes way up to like Nick's, White's, John Lofgren's, uh, there's just tons of all those like $800, $600 to $1,000 brands, but this is like your everyday man's high quality heritage style boot. And we get a lot of questions, uh, which one's better? Cause we've done a, a video on both of these, cut in half obviously. And you can check those out, the links in the description. It'll go, it'll go into a lot more detail and it'll be a lot more structured than this because I'm just kind of uh, free handing it, I guess. And so check those videos out. And um, so let's start going over the contender. So first we have the Iron Rangers. I got my little cheat sheet down here to, to uh, help us out through this video. So the brand is, I, the brand is Red Wing. The style is Iron Ranger. I have the slate color. They retail for $350. And the way that Red Wing positions this boot is the Iron Ranger is an American icon beloved for its standout style, and long lasting construction with its toe cap speed hooks and a Vibram outsole. There's no mistaking this leather legend. Okay, that's your breakdown of that. Now, if we go to Wolverine's terrible site, there's so many pop ups. I. Can't, like I don't, I don't think our site has a pop-up and it's because it's so annoying. So obviously the brand is Wolverine. The style is the men's thousand mile plain toe classic boot. They, I've got it in the Havana Brown and they retail for $400. So $50 more than the Iron Rangers. And the way they position this is America's original work boot brand. We honor our 135 plus year legacy with the thousand mile collection. Timeless styles handcrafted in America from our archival work boot patterns. The thousand mile classic boot is a modern upgrade to the iconic original thousand mile boot, offering the durability of Vibram tap sole with the integrity and timelessness of our 1914 silhouette. And if you didn't know, the reason I know so much about leather and can grade it and I've created this whole channel was because before this channel even started, I was doing leather working in college, started a little company, and almost eight or nine years later, here we are still making those same style of products, which include our hand stitched wallets. Most wallets use a sewing machine. That's why if you pop a stitch, the whole thing falls apart. They use really terrible leather. It's backed by fabric. That's why that, that falls apart. We use nice, thick American tan, vegetable tan leather, hand sewing it with a single needle, a single thread, two needles, exactly the way they used to sew saddles together to make those super strong. Cause if you pop one of those stitches, the whole thing doesn't fall apart. We also make our micro adjust belts that, cause, that solve that one problem we all have of it when you buy a belt it fits you perfectly it stretches out just a little bit now one hole's too tight one's too loose with our micro adjust belts you can make a tiny adjustment to bridge that gap between the two holes to make your belt fit you perfectly so check those products out via the link in my description we make them by hand here in the shop out of the best leather in the entire world so thank you guys for supporting this channel and our products we'll put the links in the description so now that you have the lay of the land what these boots are the price points and it's pretty clear why we're comparing them they're essentially the same boot but the iron ranger has a toe cap both American brands made in the United States. And so what, the way I wanna do this is go is do it layer by layer, comparing each component of these two boots so you can get a full understanding of what's good about it, what's bad, what are they used for, which one I prefer over the other. So I think we start from the bottom up. So let's start with the outsoles. So on the Red Wing, obviously you have that Vibram outsole on the, uh, <laughs> on the Thousand Mile boot, you also have a Vibram outsole. The, Iron Ranger has a little bit thicker of a lug. You know, it's, a, it's gonna be a little bit more grippy compared to the Thousand Mile Boot is a lot more of a dress style outsole with a lot lower ridges. And obviously the Wolverine is is just a, uh, what do they call this? Uh, it's, it's only of this portion of the boot. What is it called? Half sole, I think is what it's called. And that's mostly for looks. You're not gonna get a lot of difference between the two of them. And then the heel, heel caps, pretty similar. You know, obviously the Wolverine has a couple extra layers. It has one layer of leather with two layers of compressed cardboard, which makes the heel a little bit taller than the Iron Rangers. And the difference between the two, it's mostly aesthetic. You know, you're not gonna get a lot of wear difference between the two. Um, you might, you could make a case that the Thousand Mile will last a little bit longer in the, in the heel because it's a single heel cap, or a, gosh, I can remember all the worst of these things. Uh, top lift versus this is an integrated one. So there's some voids on the inside, as you can see here. But now that I'm looking at it, honestly, the Wolverine is a little bit thinner. So benefits of having a cross section, as you can actually see. So other than style, they're about the same, except for you're gonna get a little more traction out of the Iron Rangers. Then if we go up to the midsole, this is where things start to get a little bit different between the two boots, because the midsole in the Iron Ranger 
is just the cork. So there's no dedicated slip sole, there's no dedicated midsole. It just goes from outsole into the filling that is they use to, to fill that void caused by the Goodyear welt. Versus if you look at the thousand mile boot, you've got a full length uh, veg tan midsole. So you can see the difference there between not having a midsole, not having a midsole and having a midsole. And benefits of that is when you go to resole these, the Iron Ranger, you kind of are, are pulling apart some of the internal structure of the boot when you when you resole these. It's not gonna be that big of a deal because a cobbler can just throw some new cork in there versus the thousand mile boot. When you peel this, this half sole off, you still have all that internal bits protected and sealed in there by that leather in <laughs> leather midsole. And so it makes it easier to, to resole, but it doesn't really affect that much. I obviously preferred the full length leather insole just because it's a little bit more sturdy, you have a little bit more to compress, it's a little bit more separation from the ground, but it does make it a little bit heavier and a little bit more inflexible compared to the Iron Rangers, which are very, very simple. And ideally, honestly, if, if, if I were to like uh, design the Iron Ranger over again, I would just try to convince them to throw some kind of midsole in there because they already have the Rand, the heel, and they could just use that as the full length midsole, I think, I don't know. So maybe we'll do a video on the Rose Anvil Builds channel about um, making how Red Wing should have made Iron Rangers. Those are fun to do. And um, so I would give the edge a little bit to the Wolverine on this one. The edge went a little bit to the Iron Ranger with the outsole. Then moving up, we have the cork filling. And both of these have a cork filling. And that's they use that because when you use a Goodyear welt construction, it creates a void on the inside. And so you either fill that with leather, foam, or cork. I kind of rank them personally as leather is the best, then cork, and then foam. But you know, there's arguments to be made either way because a leather filling is gonna be harder, it's gonna take longer to break in. A cork filling is gonna break in faster, it's natural material, so it's gonna, uh, has all the natural properties. Foam is gonna be more comfortable, but it's not a natural material. And so, you, you know, depending on what you want, you can rank these differently. If you want ultra comfort, maybe you go foam. If you want really traditional, durable, hardworking, maybe leather insole, or leather filling. But the classic way of making this style boot is usually cork. The shank in the Iron Ranger is a steel shank. The shank in the Thousand Mile boot is a fiberglass shank. Both are good. You know, fiberglass is gonna bend a little bit more. It's not gonna set off the metal detectors at concerts or airports or wherever you're going through metal detectors. Um, but it's not gonna give you quite as much rigid rigidity versus the steel shank. It's gonna be a lot stronger. It's not gonna deform. It's not gonna bend nearly as much. And between the two, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter unless you're working in them. If you're gonna be using Iron Rangers for work boots, which there's a lot of work boots out there that might be better for you, you might want the steel shank for climbing on ladders, for hitting shovels, all that stuff that you'd be doing work for, you might wanna do the steel shank. But for the most part, it's about the same. Then to the stuff that actually starts getting different, we get up to the insole. So the Iron Ranger famously said by, the, by uh, Red Wing themselves, it is their full length leather insole. It's about six, five to six millimeters thick. And this is really where you get that compression, that custom footprint deep inside of your boot that people really love heritage style of boots for uh, because it's not just like walking around on concrete. It actually forms to your toes and your arch. And so you get this interesting like glove-like fit and it makes it more comfortable because that weight's distributed along a bigger surface area. So uh, that's what I like about the, the Red Wings compared to the Wolverines because you've got a full length fiberboard insole. And the problem with that is fiberboard, you usually see it in like $250 and under boots. You know, it's not the most premium material. It breaks down. It's just a bunch of like, basically it's a thick piece of paper that's put inside of a boot. And so as you wear it over time, it doesn't have the internal fiber structure that leather has to hold all the, the those fibers together, to hold the leather together with that top grain holding all that together. It's just loose paper fibers. So as you bend it, as you get it wet, it can deform, it can separate. And especially when these cobblers go in and try to fix your boots, if if this uh, thousand mile boot didn't have that full length leather insole, if they start tearing stuff out, you can just tear chunks off the entire insole and then you gotta do a full rebuild, which is gonna cost you a lot more money than just slapping a new outsole on. But like I said, they've already kind of fixed that by having it all encapsulated with that leather uh, midsole. So obviously edge goes to red wings in my opinion. The The benefit of the fiberboard though is it breaks in faster, it's gonna be more comfortable faster and it just, it has a different feel to it. It's not nearly as hard, it will bend more into the cork as you wear it. 
but basically everything else I would lean towards the Iron Rangers. And if we look at the next layer up, this is where my biggest complaint with the Wolverines are. Uh, but we'll start with Iron Rangers first. So above the insole, you've got a half sock liner here on the Iron Rangers. And uh, this is mostly just to cover the nails that are driven down through the insole to bind all those layers together. There's also nails going up through the uh, heel cap, top lift, whatever it's called, uh, heel that go up into there. And so it just is a way to protect your foot for, because the thing is they're clinch nails, so they're gonna bend over and it's not gonna poke the bottom of your heel, it's just going to snag your socks if you didn't have that, if you have the issue of a nail coming through, which is fairly rare. Compare that to this disaster of the Wolverines. And I don't know how they got to this point and how they decided to do this, but they essentially have two sock liners. The first one is a, a nice leather sock liner, with a little bit of latex foam underneath, give you just a little bit of squish. And then you have a, the rest of the, the boot is lined with a pigskin lining. But the problem is neither of them go full length. And so you've got this junction between the two where if you've owned one of these style of boots, and they have a half sock liner, you've probably experienced where that sock liner starts rolling up and it's super obnoxious. You have to try to glue it down and it never works and it's just a disaster. And the problem with having two of those is you have double the ability of both of them rolling up. And you know, the one on the closest one to the heel is not too bad because you kind of reach in and, and flatten it down. And when you put your foot in the boot, it rolls it back down and it's flat. But if you have this, uh, four foot liner start rolling up. Every time you put your foot in the boot, it's just gonna roll it up. And so I don't know why they did that. I honestly think the majority of the reason they did it was to hide and disguise the fact that it wasn't a leather insole because there's no other reason they do that. It's uh, Wolverine sneaky in that way because they are a giant corporation. Like they, they make like a huge percentage of the boots on the market. Uh, Red Wing on the other hand, it's a vertically, vertically integrated company. They own the tannery, they own the uh, majority of the outsole components. They make them in house, they sew everything in house. So it's all vertically integrated, which is uh, allows them to make them for cheaper. But not that Wolverine can't make them for cheaper because they are a giant corporation and they clearly are better at hiding some of the, the sins and the flaws on the inside of their boots. Then if we get up to the lining, we have a kind of a cotton, I think it's called cotton drill. I think it's what the fabric's called. It's like a little canvas. It's not quite as strong as a canvas because it's a different type of weave. Uh, and then compared to the thousand mile boot, you have another pigskin liner. I like leather liners because it's going to wear better. It's going to be a little bit more hot, but the problem with these canvas liners is over time you can, your toes can wear through it and then you got flaps on the inside of your boot. Um, and Ideally, I'd like Red Wing to upgrade that to leather because they do it in their mock toe boot. I'm not sure why they do it, why they don't do it in the Iron Ranger because it would just make it more durable. But it, but then again, it does make it less breathable. And with the toe cap, maybe that's why they do it. It's just a lot of leather around your toes. But I would lean towards the thousand mile boot on this one because I like that pigskin liner. I like I like pigskin. It's a it's a decent leather. It's really strong. Then if we look at the counter covers, uh, the Iron Ranger does not have one because it's built more like the Pacific Northwest boots where you have an external counter cover and the counter is sandwiched in between the upper and the external counter cover versus the thousand mile boot. You have what looks like the same pigskin just reversed and uh, it's on the inside. Which one's better? It's, it's hard to say, you know, people have opinions either way, but I think it's not a big enough deal to matter. As long as there's a leather counter cover, and if we're just looking strictly for durability, probably the Iron Rangers is more durable and maybe a little bit more comfortable because you don't have these hard edges and seams, but not a huge difference between the two. The counter, on the other hand, is a huge-ish huge difference, big, bigger difference, because on the Iron Ranger, you have a leather board counter, which is leather fibers, reconstituted into a like uh, almost like a cardboard and then put into the heel versus the thousand mile boot at $50 more, you have just a synthetic counter cover or <laughs> synthetic counter. Um, out of the two of them, I would prefer the leather board. Ideally, leather's better than leather board, but leather board's better than synthetic in my opinion because synthetic can bend and crease and break over time. Leather board can as well, but it's a little bit more rigid and it's a little bit more resistant to that type of wear. Then if we go up to the, what do we got next? Pattern, I guess, the upper leather. The upper leather, both these are really good leathers because SB Foot, who's owned by uh, Red Wing, makes really good leather. I like their leather. They've got a nice uh, variety. They have some pull-up leather. They have these, these uh, uh, they, they call it like the Mule Skinner leathers where it's a rough, it's a, yeah, so it's a rough out nubuck. 
so that you still maintain some of the grain, but it's flipped to the inside. Uh, this is, and the Thousand Mile Boots is Horween's, I think it's Chrome XL. It smells like Chrome XL, which is a very famous leather because of how it wears. It's really oily. It doesn't take a lot of care to take care of it. You can brush them and it, they pop and they shine really well. And uh, it smells delicious. It's one of my favorite leathers. So which is better out of the two? They're both really good leathers. You know, I think the, the Iron Rangers is a little bit thicker, so it's gonna be harder to break in, but more durable. The Thousand Mile is gonna be easier to break in, more supple, easier to wear, but it might not have the same longevity and durability as the Iron Rangers. Then if we look at the eyelets and all these other bits, they're about the same. You know, I, there's not much of a difference there. They both are Puritan stitched up through the vamp, the quarter to the vamp, which I don't, you know, there's there's claimed benefits of them. I think mostly it's, it's just kind of a cool heritage way of doing things. Allegedly it allows it to flex and move without tearing the threads. Um, but I like it either way. It's like one giant machine that sews all three stitches all at the same time and the thread is dragged through wax and so it pre-waxes the, the thread. So like basically sealing the boot off from some of the water and other stuff that's trying to seep into the inside of your boot. And you can see even, even the little wax on the outside here, you can see little remnants of it. So that is all the internal components. So now you know all that, which is better? Um, if you're not looking at, at the price, the Iron Ranger, oh, you know, it's, it's tough because I, I, I like that leather midsole, but I, I still would lean towards the Iron Ranger because of how big of a disaster the insole and these two sock liners over top of each other, I, that ruins the boot for me, for the thousand mile boot. They, if they just would change that, this boot would be a lot more durable, that people would got a lot more resoles out of it. Um, and the Iron Ranger is, it has like six millimeters of leather in the insole, so it's, it's gonna be significantly more durable, but you don't get the comfort of the thousand mile boot. And that's kind of seem, seemingly the difference between the two. The thousand mile boot is more about comfort and uh, ease, ease of breaking in and components that aren't super tough on your feet versus the Iron Rangers are true heritage. It's just leather, heavy duty everything, big stitching, toe caps, you know, it's it's more of a durable boot. So which is the better boot durability wise? The Iron Rangers, which is the better for wearing? I still feel like you could make a case for the Iron Rangers, unless you have really sensitive feet, you might want to go with the thousand mile boots, but I have a pair. Lift up the uh, Wizard of Oz curtain. Whoa. I've got these Rawlings pair. This is like a good collaboration. They're, they're nice, but like, I don't feel like they're any more comfortable now that they're broken in than a pair of Iron Rangers or leather insole because it's it's not, you don't have that much cork in there. So once that cork's compressed, because if you look really close, it's like one millimeter of cork. So once it's compressed, it's, it's basically like leather. Um, what about which is best for the, the money? Clearly the, the Iron Rangers, it's, it's better. It's $50 less and you don't get a lot more, you get less for $50 more then you get less from the Wolverines for $50 more. The really the only saving grace of the of the thousand mile boot is that full length leather midsole. And like I said, I wouldn't mind if if uh, Red Wing did that, you know, change a few of these little things around. And um, which is best for which type of thing you're doing in your life? Um, Iron Rangers are a lot more heritagey looking. They're a little bit more bulbous. They're a little more rough looking. So if you're going for that heritagey rugged look. Go with the Iron Rangers. It's hard to beat. They're they're a beautiful boot. I love the look of them. It's built on that Munson last. You get a nice wide toe box. The Thousand Miles basically on a Munson too, so they, they're both pretty wide. But it just looks more rugged. Versus the Thousand Mile boot, it's a little bit more refined. You know, it's not it's not like a uh, Alden Indy style semi dress boot, but it is. You know, it's a little bit more refined. So when it comes to trying to dress things up, Thousand Mile. When it comes to being more rugged, the Iron Ranger, and Last questions that you guys might want to know. Um, sizing, I wear a nine and a half in Iron Rangers and I'm a 10 on the Branock and I wear, uh oh, I don't know, it's all worn off. <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it's a nine and a half in Wolverines as well. A 10 on the Branock, nine and a half in both. And which would I wear? I'd wear the Iron Rangers. Which one do I think you should buy? Probably the Iron Rangers. And honestly, I haven't worn 
my Rawlings boots nearly as much after they felt like they bottomed out in that comfort because I don't even have the half sole, it's just the leather sole. And after I found out what's on the inside and as that insole started rolling up, I just kind of lost my enthusiasm for it, you know, and it's, and so I just don't wear them as much as I used to. So overall, which is better out of the two boots, the Red Wing Iron Ranger, the Wolverine Thousand Mile, if I tally up everything that I care about and like and would, how I'd wear them, I would still go with the Iron Rangers. I think it's a better boot through and through. It's $50 less, it's more durable, it's arguably just as comfortable, you get thicker components, and it, I think it's a better looking boot. I think it's a really handsome looking boot. You can wear it with just about anything, dress it up, dress it down, work in it, go on dates on it, play in it, you know, it's a, it's a good boot. So final verdict, the Iron Ranger is still the boot to beat at 350 bucks. I have yet to see a boot that can even compete with that. So let me know what you guys think and what you thought of this style of video where I compare two boots. Did I give you too much information, not enough information, too long, too short? I like doing these because we don't have the, Oh, I don't always, I don't always, have, I don't always have the time to do these on the main channel. So I just like to sit down and just BS and throw stuff at the wall and uh, see what sticks. And if you have experience in both of these or either, put your experience in the comment section because it's a really valuable resource. Like we've talked about a bunch. For whatever reason, our comment section is maybe the best on all of YouTube. Everyone's very supportive. Everyone's really cool. And it's a, a legitimate resource for people who want sizing information, wear information, which most people like one versus the other. It's, it's a cool little resource for people. So put it down in the description. And thank you guys for supporting this Rose Anvil too. It's really fun to do. And also we have the website where we make all of our handmade wallets and belts and camera harnesses and camera gear here in the shop. So thank you guys for supporting all that stuff. It means a lot to me. It's what makes this possible. So thank you. See so ya. Yeah, basically go layer per layer, layer, layer from <laughs> layer from layer, layer, layer to layer. What am I trying to say? <laughs>